What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Wednesday, August 14th, 2024 edition wow. of the Day Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Elon Musk and Donald Trump X interview. We've got the transcript live on our Substack. We'll dive into some of the energy stuff they talked about. Next up, green hydrogen subsidies are 1,900x larger than what is given to nuclear. We got to love a good Hindenburg impression there on the cover page. Next, we'll move over to Pennsylvania. And in that, Harris can't shake her anti fracking past there specifically in pennsylvania it's a big deal so we'll we'll look at everything that's going on with a vp harris's a potential fracking ban though we'll say potential next up we'll fly overseas russia and ukraine plan to keep gas flowing amid fighting this is kind of a funny story actually next up the true cost of the biden harris bet to electrify vehicles you won't want to miss this one and then finally we'll end up All right, then we'll finish up with the new segment. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today and specifically talk about where the markets went today. We saw a little bit of a pop, oil down a little bit, so we will cover all of that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies there. Donald Trump and Elon Musk on X. And I tell you, where do you go with these two great guys having a total conversation the fact that they had this kind of a conversation if you go to the energy newsbeat.substack.com this is there and the, the staff did a great job on putting a outline of every major topic with timestamps in the transcript so that you can sit down and go military waste nuclear risk awareness nuclear threats i mean they covered michael they covered the whole gamut And I loved Trump when he said he wants to lower energy costs. I thought that that was very, very telling. And I also loved Elon's story saying we need to stop vilifying the fossil fuel industry from the standpoint of we wouldn't be here without them. Yeah, I I, I, I want to be very... Yes, I think there's some very interesting stuff that we learned about that. Elon Musk has definitely done kind of a 180 on the oil and gas yes, business. He has. because, And I also, it's an unlikely combo, Elon Musk and Donald Trump. And I think we all need to be honest that, you know, Trump is being kind to Elon Musk because Elon Musk has given a lot of money. Elon Musk right. is being kind to Donald Trump because he feel like, feels like the Democratic Party has really boxed him out. We know that with what happened with Twitter and all that. So it's really an unlikely pairing. I thought it was a very interesting interview. I mean, obviously, it it took about 45 minutes for them to kick the thing off. Right. uh, You know, for reasons that, you know, of of course it was a denial of service attack. There was millions of people trying to to flood in. Of course, the, the, the conversation started about 45 minutes late. You know, I, I I do think obviously, you know, Elon Musk, I think a little bit is trying to have his cake and eat it too. I mean, he's he's got Tesla, which is trying to, I mean, essentially put the put oil and gas out of business from a vehicle well, standpoint. I um, think Tesla Tesla will survive where the other EVs won't. And it's because it's gonna fit a market. I get you. I, I, I get that. And no, I, I I think he's having moved to Texas, he's being red pilled a little bit. So I can't be too <laughs> sad about that. I think he's also seeing the fact of, I think his involvement in space shows you how you're not going to have an electric rocket. It's never going to happen. So there is obviously still a role for fuels. I think he's obviously come aware. I I do, you know, I think some of the talk on nuclear energy was a little, but hey, uh, I'll, I'll leave that to the rest. But overall, it was a great conversation. They talked for a while. Once they were able to get going, but yeah, no. So I I thought it was great. You know, I I think, you know, Elon Musk is definitely hesitant to come out and go the full climate change red pill. You know, he's, he's still kind of holding himself back a little bit, but who knows, maybe in a couple of years, he'll be full on. Yep. He'll be I want to read there. the one paragraph that was very critical from General Mike Flynn on X. Last night marked the death of big corporate media, their inability to understand why they gloated, why they wake up in their New York corporate offices and view the numbers listed on last night, Mr. Trump, Trump's X space, realize who got the last laugh hint it wasn't them people don't like mainstream media anymore no they don't you know especially yeah yeah good old michael flynn we gotta love it 
Um, I, I love me some Michael Flynn, man. I, I, I know you do. You need a Flynn for president hat. All right, what's next? He'd be a great, great VP. Let's go to the next story here. Green hydrogen subsidies are 1,900% larger than what is given to nuclear. This is from Robert Bryce's Substack. You need to follow Robert Bryce. He is a friend of the show. He is absolutely a national treasure. Bear with me while I read this one paragraph because this is critical. Here in the U.S., the 45V tax credit in the Inflation Reduction Act provides lucrative subsidies for hydrogen production. Big business is lining up to get those subsidies. In February, Energy Exxon Energy giant ExxonMobil warned that it might cancel a proposed hydrogen project at its Baytown, Texas refinery, pending on how the Treasury Department interprets the clean hydrogen rules in the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act. Regardless of tax credits and subsidies, making and using hydrogen is a high entropy, high cost process. As a friend in the oil refining business told me last year, if you like $6 gasoline, you're going to love $14 to $20 gallon hydrogen. (laughs) Hydrogen is insanely expensive. In energy terms to manufacture, it takes about three units of energy in the form of electricity to produce two units of hydrogen. In other words, the hydrogen economy requires scads of electricity at high quality form electricity to make tiny molecules that are hard and difficult to expensive to store. Hence, the Hindenburg is not anything you want to name a business. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like name that's like naming your new well macondo i mean you might want to stay away from that yeah i mean i've been saying this for a while i'm not putting hydrogen in my car for risk of it now it's turning it into a nuke much like Stu wants to put small modular nuclear reactors in everybody's car and turn everybody into a nuclear bomb i'm not putting hey. hydrogen in my car but it's clear i mean they they want they want to dump subsidies into stuff that they feel like they can control. Again, this all goes back to control. control. Why do they like wind and solar? Well, be- because it's not oil and gas. It's not captured, you know, for, for whatever. It's all about control. They've got no, dis- yeah. they could, at the end of the day, they could care less where the energy comes from as long as whoever makes the money off the energy donates to them. That's the difference. People that make money off wind and solar donate to them and not oil and gas. That's all it comes down to. And wealth transfer because of the grift, but you did now. Yeah, it's a wealth better. transfer to people that they like. They don't mind people they like That's getting right. They mind people they don't like getting rich. That's why we're poor here, because they hate us. Well, yeah, until we get our own tanker. I'm, I'm working on that. Yeah, keep so, working on it, please. I, okay. Let's What's go, next? Let's go to Pennsylvania. Harris can't shake her anti-fracking past. I got a joke, but HR would just really stop me right now. So I'm going to stop with that one. All right. In business, (laughs) we can leave that in. (laughs) You're cut. We will, but just, well, I'm cutting you off (laughs) even before the joke starts. I cut myself. Aren't you proud? Good. In Pennsylvania, Harris can't shake her anti fracking past. The vice president of, of hostility toward fossil fuel creates an acute political challenge in a must win state. Pennsylvania's got a lot of drilling going on going there. Here's a quote. It's not like we can just shut off everything else and switch to solar and wind, Paris said at the business office of his century-old firm started by his grandfather, an Italian immigrant who leaned on New Deal projects to grow the business in its early years. A fourth-generation contractor, he requires oil and gas in order to survive. Well, she's, she's, she's flip-flopping more than a fish on, on land, on, on everything, the border... Fracking. Right. I mean, it's going to be tough to win Pennsylvania and be anti-fracking. We've seen that for 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 years now. Going back, it's the one thing that makes it super interesting. And I think the you know again, I think the establishment there is hesitant. It's one of the reasons why I don't think they picked Josh Shapiro for VP was because he's very pro-fracking. He understands as the governor, right. you may or may not like the guy, but he understands completely that the oil and gas business is critical to their. The, the uh, last the, line of this paragraph. I, I think the whole fracking ban is is just all bark and no bite. All bark and no bite. I don't think they're, they can come out and say they're going to ban fracking. They're going to shut down oil and gas. It's not going to happen. 
It's 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 yep. it's just not. I have a you, there's too much externalities that that they know would happen, and it's just a can't people. I mean, we're gonna we you know the Joe Biden in 2020 said he was gonna get rid of you know he was gonna go to Medicare for all, and then guess what? We haven't heard a peep out of him for Medicare for all. Well, people talk and they they swing way far. You know, it used to be where you you went you went in the nomination, you went far to one side. Then for the general election, you came back into the middle. No, no, no. You actually almost like come to the middle in the primaries and then go extremely far the other way during the general to make sure that you get your whole constituency. It's kind of crazy. Right. Here's the bottom line of this article is the person that was asking this question said back in the day, I would just vote Democrat right down the ticket. Now, today, I won't. So the people are starting to think and go, wait a minute, if you ban fracking, I'm not going to have any food. Let's see, eat food. I agree. Let's go to Ukraine and Russia. Plan to keep gas flowing amid fighting. Michael, you and I talked about a little bit of this. Russia and Ukraine are fighting right in the middle of a key gas field in interconnects going on. But this is important. This article really came out from Bloomberg and said both sides have no intention of halting flows in view of the Suda gas intake station in the Kurdish region with knowledge of the matter said asking not to be identified because they may get beat up. The biggest incursion is right there. And we intend to continue to provide gas transportation services within the framework of the agreement. They're wanting to live to that agreement, and here's why. I did not know this, but their Ukraine is wanting to use their system as gas storage for the EU after this, after they stop transporting the the Russian gas. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think one, it's kind of scary that they're now attacking Russia in you know Russia internationally recognized Russian territory. Now, generally, I don't care. I mean, Russia did attack. Ukraine, which was internationally recognized as Ukraine, not Russia. So in 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 my mind, yeah, great, go attack Russia. Problem is they're doing it with our weapons, which is scary. But that's a that's, that's a conversation a, for a whole nother topic. I mean, obviously, again, Russia and Ukraine are at war with each other, and they're still gonna keep gas flows. That goes to, so again, you think here they're gonna shut off fracking because Republicans and Democrats can't get along. No, no. If Russia and Ukraine can figure out how to keep gas flowing, we'll figure out how not to ban fracking, trust me. But I think it's just and- an all out you know, it's it's the saga continues. It, it is. And, and, and fortunately, money talks and people want to understand who pays the bills. Let's go to the true cost of the Biden-Harris bet to electrify electric vehicles. Two months into his presidency, Joe Biden announced $2 trillion infrastructure plan that included $174 billion in grants, subsidies, and other payouts to encourage Americans to switch to battery electric BEVs, BEVs, emphasis links added billions and billions have been poured into what increasingly fall short or convince buyers to switch i think this is really amazing 50 percent of tesla owners say they will buy another tesla but the numbers like 30 percent of regular ev buyers are buying another ev well i mean i think yeah people want to buy tesla i mean because there's actually some value to it other than just a a bad ev you know what i mean and the, uh, the amount of stuff is going on in the subsidies and everything else. 15,000 EV battery and its consent for recharging would be the biggest. It's clear that the deem the only pathway toward cleaner energy. The whole thing is just reeks of holy cow, Batman. A recent article noted that Stellantis is investing $6 billion to build generation of motors capable of running on gasoline in or Brazilian ethanol combined with plug-in hybrid. That is where the future is. Hybrids. No, I mean, we, we've been saying it for years. Yeah. Hey, let's go build us a hybrid, buddy. Yeah, we'll go build us a hybrid tanker. But all right, we'll go ahead and jump over and talk about uh, the oil and gas finance markets. But before we do that, guys, we got to pay the bills around here. As always, thanks for checking us out here on the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed 
Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Go ahead and hit the description below for all links to the timestamps, uh, links to the articles that we cover. You can also hit us up on Substack, the energynewsbeat.substack.com. It's where you can hear the full Elon Musk, Donald Trump transcript. You can also uh, check out this awesome project that we're partnering up with our friends over at Pecos Country Operating, the Crew Truth. You may know him as Ray Trevino the third. We just know him as RT. We've got an awesome oil and gas project. If you've ever wanted to get in on the ground floor of investing in oil and gas, please give us a call. You can hit the link in the description below for to sign up, and we will get you both information and get on a call and talk everything investing in oil and gas. It's it's an awesome opportunity. We love tax deductions, Stu. We love tax deductions. Tell you that much. Yes, we but do. But let's go ahead and jump in to the markets, guys. I mean, markets kind of ripped today. 1.9 percentage points for the S&P 500. NASDAQ up 2.5 percentage points. Two and 10-year yields didn't hold great. Two-year yields down two percentage points. 10-year 10, 10 yields down 1.5 percentage points. We did see two key inflation numbers drop. A producer price index only increased about 0.1 percentage points, so there's still some inflation. It's just slowing down a little bit, so obviously that's encouraged. You know, it is, there, 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 there's, you know, we'll see, you know, as you listen to this, we will see a... The producer price index, the updated one dropped at 0.1 percentage points was actually for last year. They're thinking or last month, they're thinking it'll be about 0.2 this month as well, which is which is great. I'm trying to think what else we saw today, just in the overall markets. You know, it really what, what drove overall markets is the fact that Starbucks, which is a large part of the S&P 500, hired Chipotle CEO and their stocks up 25 percentage points. So, I mean, it goes to tell you how, you know, we talk about good management, wow. good numbers. It shows you how crazy it is, you know, from a, you know, how much a good CEO is worth to a public company. You know, you whatever they're paying him, he's underpaid. Because right. that stock, that 25% increase in their stock price is worth a lot more than the salary they're taking. So hopefully, I, as a big Chipotle fan myself, last thing I'll say is I hope their burritos get bigger. And as a Starbucks fan, I hope their coffee doesn't get smaller. That is the, you know, the big beef with, with Chipotle, even though they've had a crazy three-year run or I think five-year run since he took over in 2018. Right. The burritos have gotten smaller, so I saw this funny. There are a lot of good memes out there, but we'll leave it at that. Other top line numbers, guys. We got dollar index was down about a half a percentage point. Bitcoin up two point two percentage points, just above sixty thousand dollars. Crude oil actually dropped about two percentage points, seventy eight thirty five, as we record this at about three thirty here in the afternoon on the thirteenth. Brent oil fairly flat, only up about basically flat eighty one twenty two. Natural gas after being up big today, over two dollars. And at 24 cents, drop now $2.15. So overall, down about 1.3 percentage points today. Our XOP, ENP overall select contract was down about 1, 1 percentage points, 136.87. So overall, stocks in oil and gas not doing great. You know, to kind of kind of preview prices here, Stu, we did see, you know, we're seeing a lot of volatility in oil, I mean, and 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 it, and a lot of it's coming back to other concerns other than supply and demand. I think people have have, have kind of zeroed in on supply and demand, or are, are are fairly tight through the through the end of the year. And really, it all comes down to what's going on in the Middle East. What are you hearing? Because you know, on on Sunday night, Monday night, you know, we, we were going to war. Now right. things have calmed down a little bit. I mean, what do you see? We know the Abraham Link, the USS Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group is on its way over there. Right. You know, what, are you, what are you seeing? I'm a little confused. Everybody was saying Iran was about to strike. And then I heard everybody was Iran was going to lob a nuke in the desert to let and then come out and say that. And then everyone was saying that Lebanon was going to lob at least several thousand rockets to try to break the, the Iron Dome. Don't know. I am thrilled out of my mind if they don't throw any rockets around anywhere. But on the same token, it's kind of like everybody's saber rattling right now. And they're, now everybody's waiting to kind of go, when is the strike going to hit? You take a look at the amount of U.S. military men that are in there. It's just that we are currently 8,000 more in CENTCOM. There's 40,000 American soldiers are now under the command of CENTCOM in the Middle East. That's up 8,000 troops right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's not good. You know, I saw today that, that Russia also might, in, you know, might incorporate a draft. So, I mean, it's, it's 
the the world is getting in a very tenuous place. We hope nothing crazy happens, but you know, really, it's the geopolitical mess right now that's driving prices one way or the other. Last thing I saw, Stu Chevron, they they announced today that they've started production at Anchor at their Anchor facility with some industry leading deep water technology this is pretty nice. crazy Stu. this anchor production that they have over what's field what field is it in they've got it well i gotta find it down here it's uh, in there uh, i forget what what field it is out there I'm, I'm not as familiar with some of these offshore fields where is it blah 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 blah. it's in here somewhere oh the green canyon area so that's deep deep offshore i mean here's some of the numbers Stu. you've got thirty four thousand feet below sea level twenty thousand si surface wow. uh, surface pressure and you're talking about 5,000 feet of water between you or seawater between you and the floor. So you're talking an unbelievable distance here. This is their sixth operative facility producing, or this is, you know, th- this uh, floating production unit that they've rolled out there officially can do about 75,000 gross barrels of oil per day, about 28 million cubic feet of natural gas per day. This anchor development is going to consist of about seven subsea wells that tie into that FPU. It's about 140 miles off the coast of Louisiana, again, in depths of about 5,000 feet of water. You know, they, they could be up to 440 million uh, BOE available there. Pretty crazy. They own about 62% of this project with Total owning the other 37%. So deep water's back, baby. Gotta let me There's never a time water. to go drill deep water. It's when you've got prices where they are now. It's it's really all it is. So pretty crazy. You know, maybe we try to get in on some deep water development. So maybe Newsbeats goes 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 drills in our own deep water well. Imagine I, that. I wouldn't mind having an offshore rig by myself. Yeah, you you would you'd be the one person in the country that would like that. Nobody could bother you. And leave me alone <laughs> when a hurricane shows up. So, all right, what what are we forgetting, Stu? Oh no, just buckle up. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be a a pretty big. I, I do want to say as we record this, things API crude oil inventories just dropped. 5.2 million barrel draw is the crude oil API guesstimate. You'll hear it about 10.30 or 9.30, excuse me, East Central Standard Time. The day you listen to this on Wednesday, the 14th, you, you'll hear exactly what the EIA is predicting. But man, it could be a big draw. We might see a boon for prices. Prices are already spiking, Stu. We've already seen about a 45 cent increase in, 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 in spot oil prices. So, um, well, hey, maybe there's less oil out there than we think. Who knows? There's plenty. All right. Well, with that, guys, we'll let you get out of here. Get back to work. We appreciate you checking us out here on the world's greatest podcast. Right. Uh, check us out, www.energynewsbeat.com. For Stuart Turley, and Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.